All right, today we want to give you a demonstration here of uh, how to make a hypertufa bowl. Um, there's obviously uh, different shapes you can use. We're going to use as a mold today uh, this particular pot. It's uh, plastic. Uh, it's about a, a 12 inch bowl and that's what we'll use for our mold. The po proper proportions uh, used here are, are very important. What I like to use would be three parts peat moss, three parts perlite, and two parts Portland cement. Now before we add the Portland cement, we want to thoroughly mix these two. Once the cement is added, it's a little bit harder to, uh, to do this mixing, so this is a good time to get these first two ingredients mixed together. Okay, now we have that mixed up thoroughly. Next we're going to be adding our Portland cement. However, when we're dealing with Portland cement, I would highly recommend the use of some latex gloves, basically to protect your skin. Um, you might consider a dust mask um, when you're working with this, at least briefly here. This powder is very fine and it is an irritant to your eyes. So thorough mixing is very, very important at this point. You really shouldn't be able to identify one of the three ingredients by itself. We should have this total blend here. And what we need now is going to be our water. We have some options though. We can add some cement color to the mix and uh, end up with some, some different colors. Uh, there's reds, browns, charcoal, gray, uh, buff colors available. Uh, this is the, uh, the red we're going to use today. It's a very concentrated liquid. So you don't need a whole lot in the water to uh, color this concrete. Due to the concentration here, we want to shake that up a little bit. Get that mixed pretty good. And we'll pour a small amount into our water here. This isn't real scientific, this part. Okay. And now that needs to be thoroughly mixed with the water again due to that thick concentration. So we're going to give this a good shake here. Get that mixed up well. Now we're going to start blending this in. We want to spread this out e evenly the best we can. And it's best to not use too much at first until we're sure we're not overdoing this. We can always add some more later. But very important that this gets thoroughly mixed, especially with this color in here. All right, this would pretty much be an example now of, of the uh, the finished product before we go into the mold with it. Uh, you can see the color saturated through everything. We don't have any big lumps in here. Uh, if you do find a few sticks uh, that got through from the peat moss, you might want to toss those out. We're just going to take some of our mix here, drop it into the bottom, spread that around. Usually the bottom is going to be no less than one inch thick and uh, you might want to have a little dowel or something with an inch mark on it so you can press down in there so you get a pretty good idea what your depth is. Some of the loose stuff that falls to the bottom we'll take out and just throw back in the, the bin here. This is easily workable for half an hour, 45 minutes without any problem. Now if we exert too much pressure down without putting some uh, support on the side here we could cave our wall in so you do have to kind of keep support on the inside here also as we're pressing down. We tend to get a little thick on the inside toward the bottom here and a lot of times I'll just take a screwdriver and come around carve out a little bit of the excess here. Because these are meant to look like uh, rock when we're done um, a little bit of variance like that really, really isn't a problem. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. We'll make sure we've got our inside wall nice and firmly packed here. The issue of drainage still has to be addressed here. 
Uh, what I found to be the easiest is to, um, when this comes out of the mold and uh, we carve this up a little bit, let it dry for a few days, it's easy to come in with electric drill from the bottom and drill a couple holes in there. So I'm not concerned about the drainage at this point. Others choose to put uh, some wood dowels in there now and they can just pull those out later and have the drainage already in. We're going to put this into a poly bag here and then we'll just uh, set that aside for a day or so before we uh, begin to carve this. Okay, we're back out here uh, about 24 hours later now and you can kind of hear that let loose and at that point we can just go straight up with our container. A uh, couple types of uh, steel brushes here uh, work very well. So we're just going to begin to go over that several times. It takes a little more effort in these areas that are real smooth here where there's more Portland cement as opposed to some of the areas you can see are a little more porous. Uh, just one or two scrapes there are adequate. Up here where it's smooth, it's going to take a little more effort to rough that up. But with the utility knife, sometimes we'll just come up and make it look like we have a few small cracks. Come across in a couple different places. And then we'll take the screwdriver to actually take a little more material out of there. And it's pretty easy to follow the line of that that we made with that utility knife. And about the last thing we need to do now is to get this cured properly. It needs to go back into a poly bag. We want to seal, seal that up. So no air can really get in there. We want to create a lot of humidity now and actually want to store this for at least a full month. So that completes this part of the process. Okay, we have a couple examples of the finished product here. And uh, this one has been uh, planted about a year ago and we start having some uh, weathered and aged look to this, which we like. Uh, we need to make sure we're dealing with some very small plants that are going to grow very slowly. Uh, rock garden plants, alpine plants basically is the term we would give these. A uh, much smaller hypertufa container here is just simply a uh, basically a flower pot that was carved up uh, with a natural stone look. This one was without uh, color added to the cement. This would be the real natural look to it. A little conifer in here that grows very slowly. We offer about 100 different uh, hypertufa containers at Rose Hill Gardens. Many of them are planted up the way you see them here. Others are available just in um, empty pots of all different sizes for those of you who want to be creative and, and do your own. So they're available either way. Rose Hill Gardens also has about 10,000 uh, perennial pots available for uh, retail sales. Uh, we're open May through September. Uh, we're located just outside of uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, about two miles west, and um, we welcome any inquiries or questions uh, through email at any time.